Somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame. Like a big shadow. I mean, how'd you get to where you are? You know how to do it. You know exactly how to be you or how to be me. You don't want to do it. And if the why is powerful, the how is easy. But if the why isn't strong, it's my responsibility. A man is supposed to take care of his family. You live in my house, fill your belly with my food, put you behind on my bed because you're my son. Because I like you, because it's my duty to take care of you. I owe a responsibility to you. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Yeah, I, I am nervous about the situation. Yeah, I am fearful about the situation. But what am I afraid of? And then you kind of unpack it. And then it gives you the ability to look at it for really what it is, which is nothing more than your imagination <laughs> running this course. You know? Now, don't you go through life worrying about whether somebody like you or not. You best be making sure they're doing right by you. You understand what I'm saying? What did you say to the kid? It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit. And keep moving forward. How much you can take. And keep moving forward. Everybody that you fight is not your enemy. And everybody that helps you is not your friend. You should love your enemy. So you might say, well, why should you do that? Well, your enemy is going to be your harshest critic. Now, it's possible that if you have a very good enemy, that he will show you flaws in your character that you didn't know were there. I've got things to do. So, who, so why are we going to sit around and talk about how I feel if it doesn't even affect how I act? And as a man, it shouldn't, because there's too much to do. The air is like fire. You let it get out of control and destroy you and everything around you. You manage to control, you can make a work for it. Jacob expressed great self-control as he continued to wrestle with God. How do you grow in self-control? By learning, when the pressure comes, don't worry, pray. Judge yourself by your actions, not by your thoughts. I became significantly less disappointed in myself when I started judging myself only on the actions I took not the thoughts I had. It takes courage to be different. It takes courage to go where you've never gone before. For some of you, it took courage to come to this conference. It takes courage to get you outside of the bar. It takes courage to be successful. It takes courage to win. People don't talk about people that don't win. If you win, they're going to talk about you. Do you have the courage to stand there so the storms keep raging and the people get to talking and you stand there and say, I've come too far to turn around. Do you have the courage? If something bad happens to you, you are your most competitive if you are motivated by it. Barring is a fantastic way to put it out, but also in every single thing that happens in your life, whenever anything bad happens to you, you can be motivated by it. Who I am and who I say I am, I am. No more lies. No more skirting the truth. No more bullshit. And that is worth every dime I've ever made in my life. You're just David Goggins. You're nobody. Because that's where my growth is. That's where my willpower comes from. And that's where it stays. You know how much money you have in the bank. Not the car you drive. Not the contents of your wallet. In the end, you are the person who achieved those things. And to achieve those things, you have to have the willpower and the right mindset. Be the person you want to be. When you become the right person and you become a 10, you become a leader. Why? Because 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, they follow you. And as I became a man, my wife started doing things that she wouldn't do when I was a boy. And my professors started doing things they wouldn't do when I was a boy. And business to start doing things for me that they wouldn't do when I was a boy. But when I became a man, I don't want you to think leadership is you're over somebody. <laughs> I don't want you to think leadership is a title because it's not. Le leadership is you become. You must be able to see it, Mr. Anderson. You must know it by now. You can't win. It's pointless to keep fighting. Why, Mr. Anderson? Why? Why do you persist? Because I choose to. It's so easy to win if you can control your own mind. But it seems that nobody can. And that's how the people who run the world keep the world running. And I don't blame them. But don't be mad. When you're laying there in your fucking bed and you're in the fucking hospital and you're 70, 80, 90 years old and you're thinking, 
and I feel like I didn't fucking do something. Because you did. You didn't do it. You didn't do shit. You may live a great life, man, but you're always going to feel empty inside. I don't feel empty. The Bible teaches that your body is an amazing gift from God. Use it well. And your mind is an amazing gift from God. And that's why the Bible goes after laziness as a sin. Because laziness is essentially saying, God, you have given me nothing of significance and importance. Therefore, I can fritter my life away being lazy, not developing my physical talents or my intellectual talents or my spiritual talents. Because guess what? It really doesn't matter. And God says, no, you matter. I've given you talents. Now they're dormant, a lot of them, so you got to develop them which means you got to get up off your backside cliff and you got to start working. You got to develop your body, you got to develop your mind, and you got to develop a relationship with me. If you were truly unhappy and uncomfortable and discontent with your scenario, you wouldn't be in it. So I think I don't believe there's anybody who's truly f when I was broke, I couldn't sleep. Please understand me. When I was broke, I couldn't sleep. Sometimes I get up and when I see guys and I like to hang out, I see people in the car, they, they party, they came from party and hanging out. Wow. <laughs> this guy's really having fun. I'm running. I did things right, but I never did the right thing. Like, will my life have something of substance and value that when people can see me and they can point to me, it makes them want to raise the standard and excellence in everything that they do and everything they're connected to and everything that they're part of? Or will people just say, man, this guy was a great job? He was a great athlete. And when I got out of that hospital, I thought I was driven when I played sports. I thought I was dedicated and committed when I played sports. But there's a quote that says, when do a person start to really live? When a person has faced death and I came in contact with death, but I beat it and I conquered it and I survived. And I felt as if somebody pulled the shades up on my life and they said, now you see light for what it's really worth. My perspective had totally changed. There's not a motherfucker that's up. There's not a car, there's not a person. Everybody's in their bed sleep dreading that it's a Monday. Hey, this a Monday. And I'm loving it. It's not about the running, the swimming, the push-ups, the sit-ups. It's about what those things do for your mentality. You don't get better on the daggone couch. You get better by coming out here and getting the fuck after it every daggone day. The depth of my consciousness causes me to suffer. Is it a blessing or a curse to feel everything so very deeply? A Peterson thought for a moment. And he said, the only way out is through. You take more of the thing that poisons you until you turn it into a tonic that girdles the world around you. I wanted to challenge you to see would you retreat or would you step up to me and fight for the thing that you said you wanted. He said, I just said it to see what you're willing to fight for, what you said you wanted. Like, I'm intrigued in life, how when a person say they want something, or a person say, man, I'm going to have this incredible, phenomenal life, and the only thing it takes is for the circumstance to change. And when the circumstance change, they forget everything that they once spoke, or everything they once spoke now means nothing to them. Right? The words that they spoke about a certain situation. I'm intrigued by that. Right? How a circumstance can take that away. Like, I, I understand this about life. In life, people don't burn out because of what they do. People burn out because life makes them forget why they do. But when the purpose is intact, when the mission is intact, when it's about something greater than themselves, the opposition and adversity and the challenges are part of the journey. Well, the best mental model is God wants me to learn something here and he's going to teach me that through suffering. He's going to make this difficult and he's going to make me feel pain and he's going to make this as hard as he decides it needs to be mm -hmm. so that I can sit here and learn things. People who are afraid to do something like professional fighting imagine that the fighters are not afraid, which is not true. Mm -hmm. True bravery is to be afraid and do it anyway. If you're not afraid, you're not being brave. It's easy to do something you're not afraid of doing. Your God is watching you. Your wife is watching you. I'm watching you. Your daughter's watching you. Don't let this man control you. Don't let him control you. Joshua 1.9 Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. If nothing is created or destroyed, everything that is already here. Our problem is, we've got to wait until we see it outside before we believe we've got it. Start dealing with the non-physical world, with the invisible world, with the world that you can't see through these little peepers that you've got here we call eyes. 
start to see yourself mentally. You've been given the faculties to do that. Use your imagination, see yourself already in possession of the good you desire. That will flip your mind onto a specific frequency, and you do think on frequencies. It's on that frequency that good you desire is going to start coming toward you, and you will start moving toward it. Do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. As soon as he said that, I think people stopped thinking about goals. And he made a really great argument, which was everybody at the start line of the 100 meter race has the same goal. It's to win. So it's not the person who has the best goals, it's the person who has the best systems and preparation. You don't need fun. You need purpose. You need a mission. You need something larger than yourself to live for. I had to miserably wake up every morning in the cold, because it was Indiana in November when it started. I was miserable. This is your new life. The quote says it. You judge the character of a person not by where they stand in times of comfort and convenience. You judge the character of a person by where they stand in times of challenges and controversy. Mike Tyson said it best. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. But there's nothing more stressful for me than trying to not do my work. Because if I'm not doing my work, then I'm thinking about the work I'm supposed to do. And I'm more stressed than doing the work. So everyone goes, Andrew, you need to just chill. I'm like, that sounds terrible. That sounds like the most stressful situation to be in. So all I want to do is work. Take it or leave it. There's no happiness about it. There's no peace behind it. It sucks. It just fucking sucks. It's never about running. Why do you think I run? It's the worst thing. I, I hate doing it more than anything. Think about it. Every day I wake up. I don't just run a mile, two miles. It's the one thing I hate the most to do, and I do it like I love it. 250, 60, 70, 300 mile runs at one time, no sleep. And every step, when I get to the, think about this, I get to the fucking start line, cussing at Jennifer. Why the fuck am I here? I hate this shit. Yeah. I don't care how good you are in anything, you don't have discipline, you ain't nobody. Right. Nothing without discipline because you give up on the slightest struggle without discipline. 100%. Every day I train. Every day. People talk about how your muscles don't grow unless you're resting. I don't care. I go every day because I go to teach myself a lesson. And I don't want to go, and it's boring, and I'm busy, and every single day I still go. So I learn about discipline and pain and suffering. Even at my old age with my long, difficult life, I'm still going to the gym every day to punish myself and show God that I am motivated and disciplined. And no matter what happens, I will not miss a single gym session ever. Am I happy? I don't know. Never really thought about it. Don't really care about it. Because all I really cared about was when I looked in that fucking mirror, I saw a piece of shit. Everyone is jealous of what you've got. No one is jealous of how you got it. People see the trophies, but not the training ground. Everybody wants the view, but no one wants the climb. I love it. Men don't have time to sit around crying their eyes out and saying how hard it is and dealing with their feelings and being sad and being depressed. Instead, you have to wake up and say, this is almost impossible, but I'm going to do it. And you have to get it done. If you lack talent, you can't sit back and say, I start in half an hour can't do that. If there's potential inside of you, which you know it's there, but you're too scared to tell anyone else about it, and you go on and on, get older and older and older and older, and the winners of my twins start to close, and you knew it could have been given birth to, but you never did it, I promise you, it will haunt you. There'll be more, it's a living nightmare, dude. People say they want to be happy. That's not true, by the way. If you investigate what people mean when they say they want to be happy, they say, I just want to be happy. It's a very funny phrase. It's, what do you mean, just? And so your emotions are very tightly tied to your action. Freeze, retreat, negative. Advance towards a goal, positive. No goal, no positive emotion. No goal, confusion. So no goal not only means no positive emotion, it also means confusion, and confusion means anxiety and dread. And so a life without a goal is confusing and hopeless. 
self-reflection and self-reflection and looking back and that's what we were saying earlier but because most people do not self-reflect on their actions ever and they don't understand why they end up where they end up and they think it's someone else's fault they're like i can't get anywhere in life i'm like yeah because you work your nine to five when you come home you smoke weed and play playstation why does everyone hate me because you do dumb shit and you make bad decisions see the reason why i'm asking you to say what you do wrong is because if you can't say you're doing wrong then you can't get the help that you need so, so all transformation happens with you acknowledging that you did it and you're not making an excuse for why you did it you can't overcome anything you lie about or anything you tell the truth about but you have an excuse for why you did it because what an excuse is saying is i have a reason to do this and anytime the enemy creates these circumstances i'm gonna do it again so when men say oh but i don't i feel sad who cares the world doesn't care all the men who are out here to destroy you and take your girl don't care so why are you why do you care like the only the person who should care least is you you're the only person who wakes up every day who should have a genuine vested interest in improving your life nobody else wakes up and wants to improve your life only you so if nobody else cares about how you feel why do you care you're depressed fine have you trained today sometimes you're living through the toughest thing ever and you don't know why it's happening to you but sometimes, guys, it's bigger than what you can even see right now. Sometimes your son gonna be looking you in the eye and say, Dad, how do I get through this? And then what are you gonna tell him when you quit before? What are you gonna tell him when you took shortcuts? That's the point, man. There's so much stuff that's bigger than you right now that you're going through for a bigger purpose than you can even imagine. We can all change our emotions if we really want to. You could all think yourself sad, you could all think yourself happy. Everyone can do it, but people take too long to do it. You need 10 minutes. Get good at it. Give yourself a few seconds. And then you have to decide which emotion puts me in the most competitive state right now. And you'll often find that happy is not one you choose very often. It's not a competitive emotion to be happy. I'm happy, then you don't get shit done. I like to feel proud all the time. We're not digging a hole this year. We've dug too many holes. I'm telling you, God has blessed me. And I'm telling you right now, when I reverse engineer it and go, how in the world did I get here? God said, be real with the people. You got to a point in your life where you stop digging holes. Happiness is just a feeling like sadness. Don't act like you feel. No matter in what situation you are right now, stay calm and disciplined. Patience in the right moment is the key. I refuse to be a broken man. It's disrespectful to everybody who ever died or tried hard for me to be raised, for me to emerge from this difficulty as a broken person. That's absolutely not least selfish. I refuse to be called broken. I refuse. Why don't you smile? I do. I do. But I figure something out. That's why I am never, you never hear me say I'm missing something. I found it years ago. You find it in the suck. You find it in the suck and you find it repeatedly in the suck to the point where you know exactly who you are. Most people are missing something because they don't know who they are. When I work out really hard, I have respect for myself. Yes. You know, yeah. Um, if you force yourself to do something for that day, I know I'm not a lazy piece of shit for that day. Yeah. I know I'm focused for that day. When I'm done, I'm like, I know who I am. I yeah. get shit done. And the best men are the ones who suffered the most. I wouldn't be top G if I didn't suffer more than anyone else. You're a, you're a better man than everyone else. If your life was a mess, every time something happened to them, they sat there and they looked in the mirror and said, what can I learn from this? How can I stop this happening? You want to think that your life is so much harder than somebody else's. It's not. You're lazy. You don't want to put the effort in. You don't want to work at it. You know why you're doing something, it's easier to do it. When you don't know why you're doing it, it's hard. Your why has to be greater than that knocked out. And I love it. Buster Douglas got knocked out. Nobody ever got knocked out by Mike Tyson and ever got back up. It was almost a 10 count. I, he was stumbling. They were four, three, two, one, and ding, 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 saved by the bell. He goes to his corner. The whole world is like, up. Oh, that's it. Once he comes back out, that's it. Mike's going to just hammer him. And exactly that, Mike Tyson came out like, I got him. I got this kid up against the rope. Listen to me, many of you right now, life's got you up against the rope. You can't give up. You can't give in. Listen to me, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And if life's got you backed up, I need you to do what Buster Douglas did. Buster Douglas started fighting back. And the world was shocked. <gasps> Goliath has been knocked down. What happened? And they went to Buster Douglas and they asked Buster Douglas simply like, what happened? And Buster Douglas said, listen to me, it's real simple. Before my mother died, she told the whole world that I was going to beat Mike Tyson. And two days before the fight, my mother died.
Buster Douglas had, he had a decision to make. When his mother died, he could die with his mother, or he made a decision, I can wake up and I can live for mom. And he knocked Mike Tyson out simply because his why was greater than that punch. His why was greater than defeat. His why was greater than his trial and his tribulation. And I'm telling you, if you don't know what your why is, and your why isn't strong, you're gonna get knocked out every single day. I think that the best thing you can possibly do as a man is prepare for the endless difficulty that's gonna come your way. There's no, there's no way out as a man. You're either gonna have a very difficult life to become somebody important, or you're gonna suffer the difficult to be, difficulty of being invisible. What do you wanna do? You wanna be invisible and just hide and, and work in Starbucks and never have a girlfriend who truly loves you and nobody care if you live or die? Or do you wanna go out there and be top G and be the most famous man in the world and have government agencies trying to lock you up for no reason, putting you in a dungeon? You have to make a choice. It's gonna be difficult either way. We got the same ending. We're gonna die. So if you know you're going to die, why are you playing it safe? Like if you know you're gonna die, why are you listening to other people tell you about your life? If you're gonna die, why don't you live your own life? You're gonna die anyway. Don't die on your grandma's terms. You're gonna die anyway. Don't die on your friend's terms. You're gonna die anyway. Don't die on your parents' terms. If you're gonna die, die on your own terms. What happens is you have all these voices that are telling you you're fucked up and this is gonna be hard, but for some reason, you put so much practice into you that you can ignore every one of them that are telling you you're not gonna fucking make it and still be able to fucking make it. What struggle are you going through daily? What struggle are you undertaking? What struggle are you trying to overcome? Because you should make a list of them. I can know for myself every single day I wake up and I train physically. Every single day I have to go through X amount of physical pain when my day begins. There's struggle involved. My life is difficult. Difficult lives are fulfilling. You can't entertain yourself to happiness. You must earn happiness. You must climb a mountain. You must struggle yourself to happiness. That's extremely important. What would it look like if I went forward? What would that actually mean? And then I want you to wake up every single day in between you and God. I want you to go get it. I want you to go after it. Are you listening to what I'm trying to tell you? I want you to go after it like it's a billion dollars. All you want to do is go back home. You want the warmth. You may want something to eat. You want your girl to hold you. All those things of comfort are there in that one second. And this is where people lose. So what I do in that one second, because we all think about quitting when shit's hard. But what you have to do in that one second is hard to process information during pain. Because that pain takes over and you can't think rationally. You're thinking about fight or flight, save yourself. That's not a rational thought. It's not a thought that's going to get you through hard times. I start thinking logically. I calm my brain down because your brain just wants to get the fuck out. Ring the bell, put your helmet down, get warm, and then you're really fucked. And these are the things you have to think about in the one second decision. So that's what that's all about. It's about gaining control of your mind, putting things back in the proper perspective, and then saying, I really do want to be here. And I'm going to have a bunch of these one seconds through this 130 hour journey. And I have to learn to control these because if I fail one of these one seconds, I will not be a SEAL. I will not be a doctor. I will not be a lawyer. I will not be whatever the fuck it is wants to be a champion, but nobody's willing to put in the work that it takes to be a champion. Everybody wants to hold up the trophy and say, man, I did it, but nobody's willing to put in the work that it takes to do it. I love the process. You have to want it. You have to want to be better. And it starts off with you have to have pride in yourself. You, you have to have pride in yourself. Find something difficult to do. You need that. You're not built for comfort or pleasure. Like if that comes along, good. You know, if you have a day where you're comfortable and there's some things around you that give pleasure, have some sense and enjoy it. But don't be thinking that's what your life is aimed at. Life has a funny way of testing all of us and seeing how bad we really want what it is that we say we want. Because the thing I know about people, people can talk to talk. And people do it very well. But life is going to hit you with a certain level of opposition. Life is going to hit you with a certain level of adversity. And life is going to say to you, you said you wanted it. Now let's see how bad you really want it. Do you actually want to do this or not? Do you actually want to do this or not? Because if you actually want to do it, what's going to stop you? Nothing. 
And if you don't really want to do it, what's going to stop you? You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. Hmm. You can give a, it doesn't matter what it is. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have shit. You can, you can say whatever you want about me. You can call me arrogant. You can call me anything you want, but you cannot call me a quitter. I didn't quit. So that's the difference. When it was hard, I did it anyway. That's who I've always been. And if you don't have that kind of tenacity, you're never going to be anything. All of us are created equal. Some of us just grind. Some of us don't make excuses. Some of us don't surrender. Some of us don't give up and give in. What we do with the pressure is we say, I got to take it. And I got to take it to another level. You your advantage. Why are you waiting for somebody to call you? Why are you waiting for somebody to liberate you? Why are you waiting for somebody to affirm you? Why are you waiting for somebody to tell you got a dream or go? Why are you waiting for somebody to take you by your hand and give you what's rightfully yours? However much money you make, whatever kind of life you have, that's yours. When I hear people say, oh, it's hard or I don't have time, etc., etc., all you're doing is telling me you're a loser. Every single winner feels the same as you do. The difference is they do not quit. They do not give up. They do not make excuses. They stay on the highway. It's amazing what you can achieve if you never give up. You cannot wish for a strong character and an easy life. Each is the price of the other. What if what you're going through isn't hard? What if you're just sensitive? No one knows this, but if you go back and there's videos of me out there, Google David Goggins first video or, or first uh, bad water race, you will see black compression tape on my ankles. I have broken feet at the start line of a 135 mile race. How Your feet I were broken. Broken. And if you go back, you will see as I'm finishing the race, you will see this black compression tape floating behind me. I went to the start line of that race. I trained for that race with broken fucking feet. You need to see bad things as a blessing because they're the building blocks to make you the man you want to be. When, when people say to me, this bad thing happened to me, I say, good. That's my, that's my instant response. This girl left me, good. I lost all my money, good. What do you mean good? Good. This is your chance to take all of that negative emotion, all of those building blocks, and turn yourself into a man that prevents these bad things happening to them ever again. Bad things are certainly a blessing. I believe that's how God teaches. I would actually argue that men only learn through pain. It's so easy to be great nowadays, my friend, because most people are weak. Most people don't want to go to that extra mile. Most people don't want to find that extra because it sucks. It's miserable. It's lonely. You talk about that you were kind of, you know, lonely by yourself. I was the same way. And that used to hurt me growing up. Now I fucking thrive in that shit. That's the only place to be. I have sore legs, sore back, sore shoulder. So, the struggle is real. It never gets any easier. You gotta get harder. I was out yesterday, getting after it. Had one of the best runs I've had in a long time. No one cares what you did yesterday. It only matters what you're doing today. Those who take me literally, so I'm a cheerleader for those who want to be better. Not for those who want to stay the same. Stay hard. Obsession's gonna be talent every time. You got all the talent in the world, but are you obsessed? Is it all you ever think about? Let's face it, it's you against you out there. When you walk on that court, you have to think I am the best guy out there. I don't care if LeBron's playing. So let me ask you again, do you love this game? Part of the reason that we're so obsessed with sports is because we like to see that dramatized, you know? Like, the person we really admire as an athlete isn't only the person who wins. We don't like the narcissistic winners. They're winners, and that's a plus. But if they're narcissistic, they're not good team players, they're only out for themselves, then we think, well, you're a winner in the narrow sense, but your character is suspect. You're no role model, even though you're a winner. And it's because we're looking for something deeper. We're looking for that, the manifestation of character that allows you to win across the set of possible games. And that's a real thing, that's a real ethic. 
If life is perfect all the time, you don't appreciate anything. I actually think one of the worst lives you can have is a life where everything goes right all of the time. If you're spoiled to that degree, especially as a man, as soon as you reach any kind of difficulty, you're going to crumble. If something happens to you, I promise you, if something happened to you, as sweet as you are, you're going to be what? Come on, you got to talk back to me. You're going to be what? Replace. Say it again. You're going to be what? That ought, that ought to scare you. That ought to scare you. That alone ought to make you wake up every day and say, I cannot afford to be replaced. People do it every day. They talk to themselves. They see themselves as they'd like to be. They don't have the courage you have to just run with it. You are looking for a way to change your life. You could not do this on your own. All the ways you wish you could be, that's me. I look like you want to look, I fuck like you want to fuck, I am smart, capable, and most importantly, I'm free in all the ways that you are not. If I meet a man and he says, I want an easy life, I just want a stress-free life, I look at him and think, you're born to lose. You're born to lose, sir. Life is war. And it's going to be stressful. And life isn't like, always war. Of course it is. Life is war. Every single aspect of life is war. Training is war. Fighting is war. Life is war. I, I see war everywhere. I guess the only disadvantage of being so hard on myself, because I don't see any disadvantages, because I have zero self sympathy. I blame myself for absolutely everything. We know what to do. We know what to do. Every one of us. That's why he flipped it so fast. Because he knew what to do. He didn't go by your exact protocol. He didn't go by the exact... No. He knew exactly what to do. And that's the thing that people need to get that. You know what to do, why aren't you doing it? What do you want? I know what I want. What do you want? We live in America. There's opportunity here. What do you want? Number two, build belief that you can achieve it. And I want to make this very clear to people because I find it amazing when people say they don't have motivation. I have people come to me and say, I want to get rich. I don't have motivation. I want to work harder. I said, how can you not have motivation to get rich when somebody like me with a head start like mine is still working 18 hour days every single day, seven days a week without having a day off? I'm going to crush you. You don't stand a chance. I will beat you. And you're just going to sit there and perpetually lose because you can't find the motivation to crawl up out the mud and stay a bug. Fear is my friend. Uh -huh. I love fear. Fear, fear. fear allows me to reach my highest potential. The fear of failing is an illusion. Yeah. Fear is an illusion. But we have to have desire. We have to have something that pushes us. Fear pushes us. If you're not where you want to be today, don't worry. It's gonna happen. Your time's gonna come. Your ship's gonna come in. That's the worst sh I've ever seen. If you buy into that, you deserve to be poor forever. Like, panic mode is the best mode to be in. Things aren't quite right. Life sucks. My girlfriend just left me. Can't pay my rent. Panic mode. There's absolutely nothing you can't have. Nothing. If they making it, you can have it. If they selling it, you can buy it. If they build it, you can live in it. If they fly it, you can either sit in it or fly it if you want to. You can have whatever you want, but listen to me very closely. You cannot. I will not come in here and lie to you. You cannot. You will not have anything if you're not willing to put in sweat, blood, and tears. If you think you're going to pay any other fare, you twist it. Then you go back into, you can look at that at a deeper level. The reason you try is because if you try, you feel happy in your heart. I, I can't explain the satisfaction I feel in my soul knowing that I am a problem to the enemy. I feel that joy of knowing I'm a thorn in their side. Mm. And that's what we need more of because if you don't own your soul, if you don't own your integrity, you don't really own anything anyway. I want you to take it personal. And my personal question to you is why not you? You've got the brains, you can make decisions, you can study the plan, you can change your life, you can grow immensely in the next few years. You can make your dreams come true. You can build a financial wall around your family. Nothing can get through. You can become healthy. You can become powerful. Why not you? If you decide to be rich today, who gonna stop you? Who? If you decide you want to be rich, all you gotta do is start. Why not? Who gonna stop you? Unless you tell it to the wrong person. Mama, mama, listen to me. I'm going to be rich. Ain't nobody rich in this family. Go in there and sit down somewhere. Get yourself a good job. Oh, mama, you must be right. No, mama could be wrong. Because what you have in your imagination, God didn't show it to your mama. I'm sorry. 
He showed it to you. Life's hard. It's always going to be hard. It's always going to suck. It always has. The only way to get out is to become excellent and perform at a level where your echelon is so high that you get to live this brand new experience. You need to become strong and smart and interesting and charismatic. You need to become rich, powerful, well-known, connected. You need to do it. But can all men do that? No. So, okay. But I have to tell them the truth. They don't even want to hear this. It sounds so barbaric. That's the pride in which you have as a man. Is that you see your mom, you see your girl, you see your kids, you see all this shit. You see them doing well. That's all a real man wants. They don't give a fuck about how they dress, how they look, what they're driving. They don't give a shit. Because why? Your trophies are your family and they're all walking around. Every man that sees you, they, they see you walking in with some sweatpants and shit, but they know your family's fucking balling because you put the fucking time in, you put the effort in, you put the work in. And as a man, we don't want none of that shit. We just want fucking respect. And that's what men don't give a fuck about now. But the more thing I want is for my family to look at me and say, that's the man. I love everyone more than myself. I love my children more than I love myself. I would die for my brother. I would die for my mother. I, I love a bunch of people more than myself. In fact, my entire life is putting people above me, putting other people's happiness above me. I believe that's what men do. Men stayed on the Titanic for the women and children. When you're a man, you're responsible for other people's physical and emotional happiness, of course. I wake up every day and work so that other people can enjoy the fruits of my labor. That's all I do. Every single person I love, in many ways, I love more than I love myself. And I think that every man who is capable is exactly the same. Hard times create good men, good men create good times, and the good times create a bunch of weaklings, and they mess everything up. Sometimes you need to be shocked, you need to be hammered with something. That's just how it goes, because until then, you're like, ah, maybe. I blame myself for everything. I, it's, everything's my fault. I say this all the time, okay? People ask me, Michael, what's some of your secrets? I say, some of my secrets, one of my main secrets is this. Everything that goes wrong in my life, I take full responsibility for. Because number one, if it was somebody else that did it, I should have known better. Yeah. I should have seen it. I should have not let it happen. Yeah. When you do, th that's a man, Andrew. When you can take everything on yourself so that the next time you don't make it happen, yeah. it's such a benefit. Uh, it tests you. It tests you and see how, how much of this you can take before you say, let's just, just be finished with this. You know what I mean? It wants to show you something. It wants to see how much you can take, how much you can handle of life. You say you love life, you want to live life. I'm going to show you life. Life is beautiful, but you have to accept the good and the bad as being beautiful. You can't, can't accept the good, oh, this is beautiful. Then we lose some of our life sucks. Life is beautiful because life gave us the ability to just know them on our journey in life. We met them. We loved them, we cared about them, they cared about us. That's, that's the purpose of life, just to enjoy what we had while we journeyed through it. There's no light without dark. There's no, there's no joy without pain. I can't, the, sooner or later, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, tomorrow, who knows, I'm gonna be free from this place and I'm gonna enjoy my freedom again. When I was free, yeah. Hmm. That's the beauty of life, isn't it? There's no such thing as faking it before you make it, no. You see it and you make it come true. You make everybody else accept your version of reality. You see a version of yourself inside of your mind and when other people do not see it when they look at you, you bend space-time and change your outward projection, your avatar, so others view you exactly the way you see yourself. It is called belief. You must have a vision for who you could be. There is a version of you in the world which is important, which is respected, which is rich, which is capable, which is charismatic and funny and interesting. With big arms and a long Johnson. You're not him yet, but you need to make a plan to become that person. That person exists. You have to make it come true. What do you mean, don't make dreams your master? A lot of people sit back and they dream about being a sports figure, or dream about being a SEAL, or dream about being an astronaut, and all it is is a motherfucking dream. They don't put the work behind the dream. That dream has become their fucking master. When you become the master of your fucking dream is when you say, I want to go be a Navy SEAL. And you say, okay, I'm going to lose 106 pounds in less than three fucking months. The dream was the one thing I thought about and the dream was now gone. Now, what comes in, the dream goes away and the fucking laundry list of fucking details and tasks come up. Gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do this. That's when you become the master of your dream. So, a lot of people out there dreaming. 